Okay, folks, here's our uh, first actual thing to do where we have some work to do. So again, I'm showing Design 320, although this also this week works for Design 330. And you've made your submittal presentation template of your own. So now it's the first thing to do is to do our summary page and look at our schedule. So let's see how that will go. I'm going to go to my Google Drive and I see my template here. So I'm going to open that up. And lo and behold, I see that I've filled this in. That's all good. Everything's looking good. And my summary page is 1.1.1. 1. 1. 1. 1 is the week. And this is my page and section number. And so you'll see a few things. There's a visualization of the work. There's a little schedule area and then a couple of things to work on. And the requirement is to act as if you're a gig worker or you're working for an employer. And you have to submit a time card of billable hours. Billable hours are things that actually count, that make money for the company or make money for you. And create what's called an achievement blog or achievement report that presents visual evidence of your work. Now, you're going to have to wait to do this part until the end, but you can do your schedule and you can do these things. So let's take a look and see. Let's do it at the very bottom first. It says progress check-in date. It says did not meet. Uh, that's because we haven't met for a progress check-in this week. There is no progress to check in on. This is where we'll look at your revisions and things like that. You'll learn more about that when we go over the syllabus. But it does over here ask for the Google Drive folder with files from this week. So let me look at my Google Drive. And I don't have one. I have a folder called Weekly Assignments, but I don't have one for the files for this week. So I better make one. So I'm going to go New, Folder, and I'll call it Week 1. Well, that sounds cool. And now it's asking me for a link. And you know what? I'm going to put this. I'm just holding my mouse button down, left button dragging it in there and don't worry about that there it goes it's in there that's so cool but now i want to share this okay this has to get shared somehow because i have to put the link right there so let's do that here i am i'm on week one and i'll go to my share button and it says, anyone on the internet with this link can view. Yours may or may not say that. I've kind of got mine all set up really nicely. You might have to go to this little bar here, click on the little tiny arrow, and go to anyone with the link can view. And you have a couple of choices, but we're saying anyone with the link can view. And then you're going to copy that link. And that link now is set to go on here. I highlight my words, and then the link button appears. Click, and I'm going to paste it in there. I'm a Control-V paster, but you could right-click also. It depends on what uh, browser you're in. So you have to know how to do that in your browser. And once I've done that, I need a signal to whoever is reading this that it's done. Red means not done. Green is good. Red is bad. Now, in this case, it's not too bad because there was nothing to do on the check. But over here for the Google Drive, I want to say it's green. And I like something that doesn't jump out too much. So there we go. So I've done, I, I've checked this stuff at the bottom here. You know what? I better put my name in here. Two. And I better put my W number in. It's asking for it. And you might ask, why? Oh, look at that. It's too big. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight those letters and go up to my font size. Just make it smaller till it fits. There it goes. Now, why do we need to put this on here since it's already on the first page? Every page in an engineering document 
or a quality document has to stand alone. So if this page was pulled out and printed on all on its own, you still need to know who that page is referring to. So your name and your ID go on every page. All right, so let's see. I've got my name and ID. I've talked about my check-in date. I've talked about my Google folder. I'll do my visualizations later on. Now I need a schedule. If you're a gig worker or you're working for an employer, you're, you're working to a schedule. Schedule means that by a certain time, certain work will get done so that you can get paid for it. In this class, our measure of payment is essentially a grade. You're going to get points or something like that. Uh, so it's not quite like working in the working world where people pay money per hour or money per deliverable or things like that. But, you know, uh, it's our way of starting to train you for the workforce. Many of you already know this because you're in the workforce, so you don't need the training, but I, I'm going to make you do it anyway. So let's see. I'm not, I'm not spending any time on this class on Monday this week. Maybe you are. Maybe you're going to look at all of your recordings on Monday and do some work on these days, but uh, it's up to you. You know your schedule, so figure it out. But the estimate is that you're going to need maybe four to six hours per week for this class. If you struggle a little bit with the technology and maybe your internet goes out and you, know, you have a little bit of hard time working in a quiet area, it might take you some more. Uh, but I'm going to I'm gonna suggest that I'm going to take two hours a day. Okay, and those look pretty big. I'm going to make them a little smaller. There we go. I'll make them down to 12 size, maybe even smaller. This doesn't need to be huge. And then what am I going to work on? Well, today I'm working on 1.1.1. And again, those look a little big to me. I'm going to make them a little smaller. I'm going to make them all 11. And I'm going to work on also 1.6.1. It's my last page. Those still look too big. It's, it's moving this down. I think they maybe need to be like nines. And then maybe 1.2.1. 1.3.1. Point one and 1.5.1. You'll look this over and figure out for yourself when you're going to do this. And I'm going to make those all at like a 10. There we go. And as you work through the week, you'll come back to your actual hours and put in what you actually work. Now, I don't care if this comparison comes out. You know, if your plans were changed or they didn't work out or you found that you got everything done right there, you, you don't need to do these, right? You can, if you got everything done here, you can add your deliverables on there. But this is a plan that helps you figure out when you're going to work and how much time you're going to work on it, okay? And that should all get done. And, and these are too big. See how it's coming down below this? So these are all a little bit too big. There. You got to be careful with the details, right? The top line is lining up here, and I want a little bit of a gap down here. So as you're working on these, you might have to do some formatting. As soon as you click in a box, all the formatting stuff comes up. You can make it bold, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, you can underline, you can change colors. All sorts of stuff comes up when you click into a box that will allow you to do these. So there you go. That's your summary page. This is going to get done every week in some fashion. So I'll demonstrate maybe one more time. But after that, you'll just uh, know that each week it's going to work like this. All right. Well, thank you. And as always, be, feel free to meet with me on an appointment. My appointment schedule is uh, right here. So you can always 
make it, if you didn't understand this, or you have trouble, or you're having technical issues, or um, you just have any kind of a question about it, feel free to make an appointment on one of the open days, or come to one of the lectures and labs and ask questions in. I'm looking forward to working with you and seeing great work on